In this lesson, I'll discuss how IAM authentication works. You will learn about the relationship between the Postgres rule and IAM policy. I'll also go over the benefits of using IAM authentication. With the IAM authentication for RDS, an IAM user or role is given the permission to connect to the database. Here is how it works. On the RDS database or Aurora database, you still need to create a database role or a database user and grant it the database permissions. A policy needs to be created that allows access to the database resource. This policy can then be attached to a user or a role so that the user or the role can access the database resource. Important thing to keep in mind here is that the policy does not have the granular permissions for the database objects. The DB object level permissions are still managed by way of grant and revoke in the database. The IAM user or role with appropriate policy can generate an authentication token. This authentication token may be thought of as a password, but unlike a password, token is not static. It changes with every call. A token is valid for 15 minutes. So what that means is that a token is usable for 15 minutes to create a connection to the database. But once the token expires, the use of token will lead to a failure of authentication. If the session is successfully started, then there is no impact on the session due to the token expiry. Here is how it works. User or role uses the CLI or SDK against the RDS service to generate the token. The user or role then provides the database role name and the token as password to the application like psql or pg admin. The application establishes the session with the database. The actions that can be taken by the user by way of the application are governed by the permissions granted to the role on the database. In a typical Postgres setup, permissions are managed by way of standard roles. For example, in a simple scenario, there may be only three roles, one for application, another one for admins, and a third one for support. Each of these standard roles will be granted appropriate permissions for the database objects. Since multiple users and apps need to access the database, Postgres admins may create individual database roles for access to the database. For example, there may be a role for database administrator, database support, and for the application. Each of these roles will be granted membership of the appropriate standard role. All of the roles and in individual access management is carried out by way of database roles. Typically, a person in the role of database administrator is responsible for roles management on the Postgres database. Now, if we were to use IAM authentication, this setup will change. Let's discuss how this will look like if IAM authentication is in use. For IAM authentication, we still need to create the standard database roles, each with appropriate permissions. But we do not need to create roles for individuals and applications. For IAM authentication, we will need to create standard IAM policies corresponding to each of these standard roles. So in this example, we will have three IAM policies, application policy, admin policy, and support policy. These policies have the allow permission for accessing the appropriate resource on the database. Resource here refers to the standard roles defined on the database. Existing IAM users and IAM roles will be provided access to the standard DB roles by attaching appropriate policies to the IAM users and role. So the application policy may be attached to the application role and the application will then be able to generate an authentication token and use the standard DB role name, application role, to connect to the database. Similarly, 
admin and support policies may be attached to the individual users. With this kind of setup, it is possible to manage all of the IAM and DB credentials centrally. It becomes convenient to manage changes to the roles and to create new roles. For example, if an individual in the role of admin also need to take up a support role, then it's just a matter of attaching the support policy to their IAM user. New roles may be created without the need for logging into the database. For example, let's say there is a need for a new role for support automation. Then this role may be created with support policy attached to it. So central administration is one of the benefits of using IAM authentication. There are a couple of limitations on IAM authentication. One limitation is on the number of connections per second that can be created with IAM authentication. The exact number of connections per second that are supported for IAM authentication depends on the instance type. I suggest that you check the documentation for more details. Password authentication and IAM authentication are not mutually exclusive. So what that means is that you can use both authentication mechanisms at the same time. I'm referring to it as the hybrid RBAC. Here is an example. We can have the application roles created on the database. That way, we do not have to deal with the IAM authentication limitation. To make it secure, we can even use the secrets manager as discussed earlier. For individual users, we may use the IAM authentication. Now to make it secure from individual access perspective, we can go one step further. We can attach the appropriate policies to the individual IAM users only when required. That way, the database will not be accessible to any individual user unless there is a real need for admin or support to log in. Now, before I end this lesson, I would like to bring your attention to this one very important point. I am admin user and role has access to all databases. So there is no need for explicit database permissions for I am admin. You can read more about this at the link here. Keep in mind that if your data is sensitive and by security policy, no one should be able to access it, then you have to keep this limitation in mind. Time to go over the key points. IAM authentication allows IAM users and roles to be used for database access. Couple of good things about IAM. Passwords need not be stored in client or the server for IAM authentication. Apps get the token at runtime with IAM auth, and there is no need for the apps to store password anywhere. IAM authentication makes it possible to carry out centralized access and credentials management for applications, users, and databases.